From LA Late News Headquarters in Santa Monica, this is the Midday Report on LA Late. Hey, good noontime, everybody. This is LA Late with breaking news at noontime about your four stimulus check, your four stimulus package, and Wall Street. Boy, what a surprise, as a series of new details are revealed for the first time ever just minutes ago about your fourth stimulus package. How is it going to be paid for? Will the fourth stimulus package be totally paid for? Which taxes will be raised? Over the last few weeks, you heard about the corporate tax rate, 28%, the president proposes. Joe, Joe Manchin wants a little bit less. But is there other taxes being raised? And is the bill actually written or not written? And in this recording, for the first time ever, you're going to see what's going on behind the scenes as we anticipate the reconciliation process. As we approach the end of this week, the president will be pushing climate and he'll be pushing climate louder than ever. Republicans don't want to do climate. It means the time to start reconciliation. But when you hear this recording and you hear the taxes involved, reconciliation may be coming sooner than that. It's a big morning. It's a big noontime and it's a big day. Let's get right to it. This is Noontime LA, starting right now. It's a big noon time, and thank you for joining me on L8 as we go into the afternoon. I'm so excited for you, and four stimulus is heating up. Dow is down about less than a percent. NASDAQ down about one and a half percent, and crypto is fading. Ethereum down one percent, and Bitcoin relatively flat. How are you? It is a big noon time. Hope you are having a beautiful day. One of the viewers in the live chat right now just said, I'm about to have my second uh, shot from Pfizer. Uh, any side effects? You always, it depends on which one you're getting. I had Moderna. And the second day, the shoulder, it does hurt. And then you're, you, you are, I was tired the second day. I was very tired after the second shot. Not that first day, but the day after. Thank you for joining me. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also like this video. And if you've not become a member, consider becoming a member. The kindest, most interactive, and the most informed community there is online. In this recording, you're going to go over new detail with me that I've never seen before about what's in the four stimulus package. Remember, the president's not writing the bill. In fact, the president hasn't even detailed a proposal in writing. It's a little bit different than the third stimulus package. So let's get to the details right now. And in the room, I see Tisa, Tessa, and I see Anne and Crystal and Don and Norman. It's a full room. I'm so glad that you're joining me. When we talk about the fourth stimulus package, we understand that there's two real core parts the president wants in there before the senators and the House members put the stimulus checks. Remember, this is totally different than any prior stimulus package you've seen from this channel for a series of reasons, which I'm going to get to right now. First, while the president is a former senator, he is not a legislator at this time. He's the president. He's head of the executive branch. So he will not be writing the bill. Number two, under the third, under the second stimulus package in January, if you're tuning into January, this was the only place online where you could actually see a memo from the White House that said what he proposes to put into the second stimulus package. That was in January. This time, for purposes of the third stimulus package, that memo doesn't exist. So it's quite different. It's quite different. Next is that for the first time ever, you are dealing with a with a provision that will basically start from scratch. When we did third stim, when we did second stimulus, when we did first stimulus, we were working with modifications of pre-existing items. Second stimulus was the extension of stimulus checks, extension of PUA. This bill will have a lot of brand new stuff in there, and with that brand new stuff comes a lot of questions. First, who's writing it? The bill will fall by two paths, two steps reconciliation procedural that takes a couple of weeks and then reconciliation substantive. So what's substantively going to be in the bill, Allie? Well, that has to be written by Speaker Pelosi and her subcommittees. And that is during the two-month process to get it done. The president will make recommendations of what he wants to put in there. But as you sit here today, we've often wondered how is he going to detail what he wants when we haven't actually seen his memo yet? Here's what you want to know and new breaking just this afternoon.
The president has three parts to what he wants to do. I didn't say bill because he doesn't have a bill. Part one is he wants to have infrastructure. Now, what is included in infrastructure? He's been very vague on the issue. He hasn't been very detailed. A lot of people ask you, which bridges, which railroads, which, what kind of infrastructure, what kind of internet? Is this copper lines, is a satellite? What type of internet are we talking about? Very open and not clear. Second is climate. Now, climate is really where you should smile. <laughs> not smile because, you know, it's nice and beautiful outside and beautiful climate. You should smile because this is what gives you stimulus checks. It's like, thank goodness for climate. Uh, why? Because the GOP doesn't want to do climate. And with no support for climate, you have to go by reconciliation. Yesterday, a series of GOP leaders came out again and said, we do have a counterproposal. Our counterproposal is remove climate. We're not doing climate. We're not going to do $2 trillion from the president but we will do infrastructure, just remove climate. And you know what? When it gets to infrastructure, we're not even doing the full amount of your infrastructure. We'll do watered-down infrastructure. The president today, minutes actually at the time of this recording, is meeting with GOP leaders. What you need to know is that these are just not going to formulate into anything substantive unless someone changes. Not likely to change. The president says, I have to have climate. Demo Republicans say, we're not giving you climate. Hence, reconciliation. So what just happened in the last few minutes? Well, this is what just happened in the last few minutes. A new report has come out that details step three, well, not step three, but section three of the fourth stimulus package, taxes. You haven't heard a lot of detail from me about taxes because I don't know what the details were. In fact, the reason why I don't know is because the president hasn't said it. <laughs> the president has talked about the corporate tax rate. You've heard me mention that one or two times with the Joe Manchin graphic on this channel. The corporate tax rate was reduced under the prior administration. President Biden wants to raise it 28%, and uh, Joe Manchin wants it 2% low lower. No big deal. It's not, it, it means much of nothing. The bill would pass. Everyone's happy raising corporate taxes to pay for the bill. Well, what about the other taxes? <gasps> yes. <laughs> so this is the surprise. A new political report released minutes ago says that there's a lot more tax hikes in this fourth stimulus package than you would have ever thought. And that, as we see here right now on a Monday afternoon, it's unclear from the White House whether they're intentionally keeping it unclear or they don't want you to know what the tax hikes will be. A new quote from one Democrat close to the White House to political says, tax bills are really complicated. And when you do all this at once, it's almost impossible. Interesting. Very interesting. So what is the Biden administration working on? And what have we just learning in the last few minutes? The four stimulus package that would pay you incredible stimulus checks needs to be paid for, not for purposes of stimulus checks, but for purposes of infrastructure. Let's go over those stimulus checks just to start so we understand that, and then we'll cut back to the pay-fors. The stimulus checks at issue is a monthly stimulus check. The senators and House members both want to give you a monthly stimulus check. The House members want to give you a less amount per month, but over more months. Let's go over first how many months they want to give you the stimulus checks. The senators want to pay you stimulus checks from now to December. It's about six months of checks. The House members want to give you stimulus checks for about the pandemic plus one year. So that's about 18 months. They have actually provided a bill, the House members, unlike the senators, to say, we want pandemic plus one year for stimulus checks. So that's about $18,000 if you look at the calculations. The House members want to pay $1,000 per month for the stimulus check after the first month at $2,000. So 18 months at $1,000 is about $18,000. The senators, the amount is unknown, but word on the street says that the senators want to pay you more money over a shorter period of time. Excuse me, less money but faster compared to the House members who want to pay you more money but over a longer period of time. Word on the street says that the senators want to pay you about $2,000 a month over six months, which is $12,000, or $1,400 a month over six months, which is $8,400. Look at this money. This is huge. This is the single biggest payout you have seen for any viewer of this channel since this channel launched over, over less than a year ago. Again, let's look at this number compared to the House members. House members would pay you $1,000 a month until this pandemic's over, and then continue an additional year. Well, if that's six months to get to the end of the pandemic and another year, that's $18,000. 
$18,000 but paid over 18 months versus senators who want to pay you a little bit less but faster. Really, really incredible. Who gets this money? This is you. This is you. If you're on SSI, if you're on SSDI, Social Security, Railroad Benefits Veterans, this is you. If you uh, make less than $75,000, this is you. Household of four or less, all of you will get those stimulus checks monthly. Now, what did the new report come out today say minutes ago? Well, when addressing the situation, a new political report says the administration's trying to figure out the details on the proposals on how to fund it. This is something you're hearing for the very first time in this recording. The White House is considering raising the top tax bracket back up to 39.6% for the individual tax bracket. Oh boy. Yeah, this is the first time you're hearing this. It's thinking of raising the personal tax bracket, the top th the threshold, higher, back up to 39.6%, where it was before the Republicans' 2017 tax cut. Second, it's thinking of taxing capital gains as ordinary income above a certain threshold. The top rate is almost 24% now. Third, eliminate a so-called step-up basis of death, a provision known as the angel of death, because it allows wealthy people to pass on heirs to their, to their uh, recipients. Um, and there's also talk about raising capital gains taxes and inheritance taxes, not just a tax on the wealthy and not just a tax on corporate America. So a new series of reports today talk about, does the president have support for this? The president has made clear that when he's doing this package, he's not going to change anything for families making less than $400,000 a year, but that the current, the current of polling of Americans who are hearing about this support raising taxes for the rich and corporations, but not for people less than $400,000. Wow. Very interesting. Let's go back to what's happening today, and let's go back to this graphic. Today, the President of the United States is meeting with GOP leaders at the, almost at the time of this recording to discuss counterproposals. <laughs> On Friday, his press secretary said we had no counterproposals. They've had counterproposals. The counterproposals are just like this one, which surfaced on Sunday. On Sunday, a series of Republicans appeared on broadcast news, including Senator Shelley Moore Capito, who told CNBC she would do $600, $800 billion for infrastructure. Roy Blount, two weeks ago, said he would do infrastructure at about $800 billion, removing climate. Roger Wicker, Mississippi Republican, said he'll do about 30% of, of, two, of $2 trillion. And then Senator John Corrin from Texas said on Sunday, I'll be happy to do uh, pay-fors like roads and bridges. And I think we can agree on that, but that's all we're going to do. <laughs> that's all we're going to do. Well, away we go to recon. <laughs> away we go to reconciliation. What you need to know is that this is likely to be the last week for the president to do optics of bipartisanship. What the president is doing, so you want clarity, is he's trying to make it look like he can do this on a bipartisan effort. He can't. The Republicans have drawn the line in the sand. They won't do climate. Climate is your e-ticket to monthly stimulus checks. Let me explain why. The president is not going to put stimulus checks in anything he's doing. It's a Senate move and a House move. That Senate move and House move to put those stimulus checks in happens during the reconciliation process. It wouldn't necessarily happen if there was a bipartisan bill. That bipartisan bill would not get support for Republicans because they don't want to give a stimulus check. Also, really surprising was yet another rollout of publicity from the White House. The White House released a series of new videos today, and one of them was this one. There was also one from the vice president talking about the need to get four stimulus done. Let's listen in a little bit about this video, um, and let's hear what she had to say about the importance of getting four stimulus. This was the vice president addressing the American people earlier today. And if you have questions or comments during this video, drop them, and I'll cut into the video and answer some of your questions. With great pride about where they're from. And too often, though, and we've seen this around the country, too often, though, opportunity knocks from far away. And their children grow up and have to move away. 
So Jane Valdotero just asked a great question. <clears throat> Is that amount that you had for the graphic for stimulus checks an individual check or per household? No, this is per individual. This is per individual. An individual would get either $1,400 or $2,000 a month. If the setup plan happened, if the house plan happened, it would be $1,000 a month, just more months of it. So a household would be up to four. You would double, the, you would quadruple this number if it was the household. Great question. Keep your questions coming. I'll answer them as they happen. But that should be a choice, not a necessity. And that's why we want to bring opportunity closer to home through our American Jobs Plan. A pipe fitter in Chicago could get a good job replacing lead pipes in their own city. An electrician in Helena could get a good job laying broadband lines a few towns over. A forklift operator right here in Greensboro could get a good job fixing the road they drive on every day. Now, Diane just asked a very good question. Is stimulus tax free? It is. Stimulus is not income and you do not have to pay taxes on it. And so purposes of SSI and SSDI, it is not a taxable event. Uh, you can get stimulus checks uh, uh, consistently and you do not have a taxable event for that. Great question. The phrase good job is one you've probably heard a lot about, but I want to break down what I mean when I talk about a good job. In the 21st century, in America, I believe you should not have to work more than one job to be able to pay your bills and feed your family. One good job should be enough. At a good job, you shouldn't have to worry about your safety. You shouldn't have to worry about whether you have the ability to get a good life because you might have to go in debt for a diploma that promises a decent paycheck. And there you go. There's some wonderful questions in the comments. I adore some of these questions, so I'm going to answer each of them right now. Um, one person asked, I have a 19-year-old. Would he get a stimulus check? Yes. So every American who makes less than $75,000 would get a stimulus check. If you have an adult dependent and the household is less than four, you would get a stimulus check. So that's a great question. Um, the eligibility for the fourth stimulus check would be the same as the third stimulus check. And he, let me put up that graphic again. Then Robert just asked a really good question. If the House does reoccurring stimulus checks and it gets the Senate, will the Senate vote on it? So that's a very good question. Um, what he is detailing is what I've been talking about in, since I think Sunday or a little bit of Saturday. During the second step process, during the second step of the two-step process, they go back and do the substantive bill. Remember, first step is just the procedural bill. We agree upon doing a recon, House vote, finish. Senate vote, finish, President signs it. Then they come back and they do the substance, the tow hitch. And at that point, they decide what to put on the tow hitch. They put the President's roads and his internet and his water and his clean air and his climate. But then if those House members come through they can put in there those monthly stimulus checks at the House level. What I've been reporting exclusively since Sun Saturday is that there's a new political report out that says Leader Pelosi is very close, extremely close, with House Member Omar. And House Member Omar is one of the 100-plus House members who have come out very vocal, along with this person, to provide monthly stimulus checks. They have actually introduced a bill, and that bill would provide $2,000 for every American as a critical relief, followed by $1,000 reoccurring payments throughout the ongoing pandemic, and continuing one year after the end of the crisis. You're actually reading the, the actual bill on this graphic here. So the great question from Robert Fiengo is if the House, with Leader Pelosi, put a Speaker Pelosi put that provision in there, would the Senate vote on it? Yes. The way the Senate deals with what they get from the House is they take it and they vote on it. But before they vote on the whole thing, then they seek to amend it. So the first step could be 
a senator seeing the addition of the monthly stimulus checks to the House and saying, I like it, just call for a vote. Or they could say, you know what? I want to pay more money. I want to pay more money, but over a shorter period of time. I want to pay $2,000 over six months. I don't want to pay $1,000 over 18 months. That way, Americans will get $12,000 by December instead of $18,000 over 18 months. And I want the payments to go out in two weeks. That's how he can amend the bill before it's actually called for a vote. They vote on the amendment before they vote on the whole bill. The way they do the vote of Rahm in the Senate is they do amendment, vote, amendment, vote, amendment, vote until they have all the amendments together and then they vote on the whole bill. And then it goes back to the House and off to the present. Great question. Let me jump back into the live chat with you right now and see any other questions that you're asking. Why... Uh, why are we not pushing for SSI and S? Why are they not pushing for SSI, SSDI, VA, et cetera? So Sherry, uh, Sherry, great question. So understand, Sherry, when you heard about Elizabeth Warren's $2,400 in December of, of 2020, it's $2,400. The current money on the table is $12,000, $12,000 or $8,000 or $18,000. It's nearly six times the amount of money. No one is giving up any push on this channel, but this is where your push needs to be for this. Ultimately, this is money for you. If you're on SSI and SSDI, this would be the single biggest payout. It would dwarf anything for hazard pay, for FPUC retro, or for that $2,400. Look at this money. This is where you got to push. Now, we're not giving up anything else that could be pushed. And certainly, we do have a to-do list. And ultimately, the to-do list is not going to be forgotten at any point. But what's important to understand is that this is the item that they want to give you. Who gets this if you made less than 75000 individual or household of four or less or if you're on SSI or SSDI across the board. Meantime, the president released a new video just a few minutes ago, and the message is very simple and it's very quick. Go get vaccinated. Let's listen. To Good news. Everybody is eligible as of today to get the vaccine. We have enough of it. You need to be protected, and you need, in turn, to protect your neighbors and your family. So please, get the vaccine. At the same time he was releasing that video, then uh, the, the vice president was addressing the nation on the need for forced stimulus. Let's listen in more to what she had to say during that exchange. It's pretty simple. A good job allows people the freedom to build the life you want to reach as high as you want, to aspire. That's what a good job does. And good jobs are what the president and I will create with the American Jobs Plan. We will draw on the skills that millions of workers in our country already have. Just look at what's happening here. The skills of pipe fitters and electricians uh, Mandy drops an interesting question, if, if I believe I'm understanding it right, because it's very interestingly phrased. Do, we, uh, do people on SSI have to pay back stimulus checks? No. Um, stimulus checks do not trigger anything about your benefits whatsoever. Stimulus checks are not taxable events, so they do not trigger anything. Great question. And welders, construction workers, and factory workers, and transit workers, and care workers, too. And if you don't have those skills, or if you want to learn other skills, we intend to help you get them. The truth is, a lot of jobs out there require some education after high school. Let's speak that truth. The truth is that almost every job that will be a good job will require some amount of education after high school. But here's how I think about that. And there you go. That is the latest video from the White House with the press, with the vice president addressing the American people to get forced stimulus out the door. Here's what you need to know at noontime. At noontime, a new report was released by Politico today, just a few minutes ago, that says that the White House is still trying to figure out the pay fors for forced stimulus. Hmm, interesting. Still has not delineated which taxes will be raised beyond corporate taxes. Ironically, there's more at issue than just corporate taxes to pay for forced stimulus. We're not even talking about the stimulus checks. We're just talking about climate and infrastructure. 
Meantime, uh, there's a new quote in that political article in which one Biden administration official says that Biden is concerned about demonstrating that they're paying for some of it with taxes, not all of it, because ultimately the bill is not going to be paid all by certain whatever taxes at issue. The Biden administration wants to make very clear to the American people its promise that no taxes will be raised for people who make less than $400,000 per year. But it is also talking about considering raising the top top tax market uh, tax rate bracket to 39.6%, a big change from where we are right now. Here's what you also need to know, is that the President of the United States is having bipartisan meetings today and tomorrow to speak with the Republicans. Yesterday, the Republicans said, we're not doing climate. Two weeks ago, the Republicans said, we're not doing climate. Last Friday, the press secretary says, we haven't gotten propul- counterproposals from the Republicans. They've had counterproposals for three weeks. Ultimately, reconciliation is the only path to get this done. And the only path to get reconciliation done is two months before July 4th. Leader Schumer and Speaker Pelosi have both confirmed that the vote on this is by July 4th. If you have been with this channel since last year, you know the significance of July. Whether it was me making jokes about Mitch McConnell in a Tahitian villa with his feet in the jacuzzi and holding a Mai Tai, or it was Nancy chasing around the postman, you remember what happens between July and September. Nothing. Literally nothing. They don't work between July and September. September. There's a lot of reasons you want this done quicker than later. First, July to September is a couple stimulus checks, folks. July, August, September, that's three stimulus checks you could miss out on once in one beat if they go on vacation. Second, the economy could rebound by then, or, and that any more rebounding the economy that we're currently on path for could signal a cold feet among those members. Throughout the day and yesterday, I went over the new economic data that came in. Today, we're waiting for more economic data to signal whether the growth rate we're currently at, which is showing rebounding the economy full recovery by the end of this year, could be faster or slower. Earlier today, Coca-Cola reported earnings, and it came in as a beat, but not a substantial beat. That's good news. But we're still waiting on news today from United Airlines and IBM coming later today on reporting. Tomorrow is the big one. Tomorrow could have blowout earnings, and then on Thursday, Amer- excuse me, Friday, American Express could be the big- biggest single indicator of how quickly we are recovering as an economy. Also, here is a really interesting twist. Because you and I know we cover everything on this channel. I just showed you that Coca-Cola reported their earnings today. Guess what they also reported? And I want to see your reaction in the chat right now. If your reaction is you're not happy, give me an oh no. Or if you're happy with it, just give me an oh well. (laughs) Coca-Cola announced, well, because of things that are going on, we're going to be raising our prices on beverages. Yes, Coca-Cola is now going to cost more. Uh, And that was the announcement today. Oh, no, or oh, well. It's one of those situations where suddenly you're starting to see price inflation. Price inflation is one of those reasons you need stimulus checks to happen because things are going to cost more money. And something as simple as a a can of Coca-Cola, although they did not identify which beverage was going to cost more, they say they're raising prices of their beverages, plural, for the first time since 2018. Let me see your reaction to the rising prices of some Coca-Cola. A lot of da- a lot of unhappy faces. A lot of oh no's. Oh brother. See, this is why we need to watch these things as a family. There's Amy and there's Elizabeth. There's Black Jelly and there's Sarah and there's Tiffany, and there's PPMS and Celenda, um, with an O oh well, because um, <laughs> Celenda doesn't drink Coke, doesn't drink soda. Um, but then someone. Uh, but even people who don't drink soda are not happy with this news. Uh, they did not detail how much the prices were going to go up, but it was enough for them to make that announcement. Uh, the biggest, the, the, the most significant announcement for price increase of Coca-Cola products since 2018. We're starting. We're starting. Uh, you know, next is going to be Javita's going to not see any more scarves on sale at TJ Maxx. Uh, thank you for joining me on uh, Noontime LA. Let me give you the big recap of where we are. 
at uh, at the twenty minute at the thirty minute mark. It's a big day with exciting, great news across the board. The president of the United States is going to have to do a reconciliation process for your fourth stimulus because he doesn't have a Democrat, he doesn't have Republican support. The current issue at hand is climate. Climate remains the deal breaker for fourth stimulus, but it's also the e ticket for you get monthly stimulus checks. The Republicans don't want to give a penny for climate. They said it three weeks ago, they said it this weekend, and they said it today. They said their counterproposal is to remove climate. That's a deal breaker for the president. They also <laughs> went in even deeper. The Republicans said, oh, we're going to take out climate, and as to your infrastructure, we're going to cut that also. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, really going well there, isn't it? Yeah, cross the negotiations. Not going to happen. Ultimately, the single most important thing you need to do, Purple Power, the viewers' this channel, is push your elected leaders, to get this to reconciliation starting ASAP. It takes two months to do a reconciliation under the best universe. Two months from July 4th is May 4th. We're just a few days away from when the start deadline to start a reconciliation is upon us. You and I know Leader Schumer knows the two-month idea, two-month situation. You and I know that Speaker Pelosi knows about the two months. The big issue is pushing everyone else to get on top of the president to start reconciliation. You tried the bipartisanship. It's time to hashtag MSC, hashtag Purple Power. Get this to reconciliation. Tag your Democratic senators and Democratic House members to get them to push this to reconciliation. And let's look back again at that graphic and understand the money at issue. Who gets four stimulus? If you make less than $75,000, this is you. If you're a household of four or less, this is you. If you're on SSI or SSDI, this is you. The path for four stimulus is through reconciliation. House members would pay you less money but more months. The pandemic plus uh, one year, the senators would pay you more money over a shorter period of time. Where on the street says the senators want to pay you $2,000 a month an individual. Thank you, Chris, for the dancing pair. Thank you so much, Chris uh, Wilburn, for the dancing pair. Or $1,400 a month, $8,400. This is the single biggest payout ever for viewers of this channel. Got to do it. Got to do it. When will we know if the four stimulus checks are put in the bill? Nikki. Oh, Nikki, that is a great question. Uh, it's a big question to end the video with. Let's see if I could do it quickly. I did this yesterday. I think it almost took almost four minutes to explain. You literally find out after it's passed. Yeah, you're going to find out afterwards. Why? The reconciliation process, when it goes to the Senate, if the senators add it in, they're going to do it at the Voterama, and the senators are going to keep it a secret to the moment it's called for a vote. The only people who will know about it are their inner allies who have they have already caucused with privately to ask their allegiance to vote yes. They're not going to tell the press. They're not going to tell the Republicans. They're not going to tell the YouTube channel what they're doing ahead of time so that they literally slide it in. They don't want the other side to know. I've described it as both a MacGyver approach to, to, to politics, also sort of cloak and dagger. That's how they did it under third stimulus, and that's how they'll do it under fourth stimulus. If the House members, as opposed to senators, put it in, you would actually see it after the fact, after they vote on, on the House floor. But for purpose of the senators, it's not a subcommittee. It's not like it's belabored over a week or five days and it leaks out and there's a PDF. No, it's literally, are you ready? And then they call for a vote. It's done. You find out literally right after it happens. Great news. And I'll have more about that later today as I join me in two hours from now as Afternoons LA kicks up, our, kicks up its feet. Let me show you our programming schedule. And I'm so excited you are here with me now. And I look forward to seeing you in two hours from now. You're currently watching Noontime at LA. In two hours from now, I'm back with Afternoons LA. That's a live broadcast. And I have new details about your four stimulus, also student loan debt forgiveness, and the business grants as well. Then after that, we go into our late afternoon programming schedule. Another Afternoons LA at 6 p.m., then Evenings LA at 8 p.m., followed by LA Late Night 
our irreverent humor only broadcast. Thank you for joining me on Noontime LA. If you've not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Also, like this video. Let's try to do two, 3,000 likes. It's our one year anniversary in just a few days, April 25th. So, trying to get to 400,000 subscribers. Help us get there. Stay informed, stay focused, keep on smiling, and I'll see you in about two hours from now on Afternoons LA.